Okay. Recording. That is not a napkin, Paul. I know, it's a piece of paper. That was school paper. All right, so we... <laughs> <laughs> Letterhead. Ah. So, hi, this is a special TTT in the summertime. Um, these people who are with us, are we are working on a project together um, around LRNG and digital portfolios. And I don't know why I'm speaking in such short sentences, but welcome. <laughs> Don Lee, Janet Ilko, Jessica Hernandez Spear, Christina Cantrell, and I are sort of um, corralling these people and trying to gather questions and figure out what's next. Is that fair? Um, what else do you want to say to begin here, Christina? Um, well, just said uh, thanks all for being here, and we're recording it because I know Mike can't come tonight, and some other people. Oh, Chris also is in. Sorry. Um, so it's one in the morning where he is. So I said we could send him the recording afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have to stay awake. Um, but. Uh, I also want to say that the document that we're looking at um, that we've been using has all the notes from the previous conversations too. And so maybe we could just recap real fast where we were last week and where we think we are now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, Paul just recently watched where we were last I week. I have that advantage, yes. <laughs> um, Fireworks are happening somewhere locally. Um, so just know, someone's setting them off in case you hear explosions. So some of the clarity that we want to get to right here at the beginning, um, we can kind of Say and then we want what we really want to get to is is looking at the end here, um, or, or sooner. As soon as possible, we want to look at the learning experiences that actually exist already, and then start thinking about how to how to organize together. Um, but why we are doing this? Shall we just say what we put on this list and then expand on it? So. We are, this project, we are designing youth-facing curriculum that can be connected nationally via Youth Voices. I guess that's curricula, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, it does seem to me that everybody often says, I don't want to lose the gold sort of uh, thing of the kids con youth connecting on youth voices. Um, and so we're going to keep that central in lots of ways, I think. Um, but we want to learn how to use this platform and related curriculum, badges, portfolios to support youth and their interests and learning how to do it in our formal core classrooms. I Because I, I, I did hear quite a few people trying to figure out should I do this just with my photography kids or, you know, whatever. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Christina, but I think the, the goal is to see what it looks like in the quote unquote core classes. Doesn't mean it doesn't also connect to other classes. That's a great idea. Hi, but, Ashley. Yeah. Hey. Cool. Sorry, I'm late. No, welcome. Hi, Ashley. Ashley, just, I'm um, sorry, Paul, just to say, I just want to make sure Ashley is in the same document as us. So Ashley, you were part of that conversation last week too, but um, Paul sort of recapping where we were last week and also sort of were responding to a few things that came up last week also. Okay. Cool. And Ashley, introduce yourself. I don't know if you've met Jessica, Jessica. Oh yeah, you guys might not have met, right. Hi. I'm Ashley Hutchinson. I teach English in Greenville, North Carolina, and I work with the Tar River Writing Project. And this is Addie. She's Hi, Addie. 
I'm Jessica and I teach uh, English and ESL in the Bronx. Nice to meet you. Has Jan Janet, have you met Jessica and Ashley yet? Um, I think I met Ashley last time. Um, before, and I'm sorry I missed last week. We, my daughter got married this last weekend, so it's Yay. been crazy. Um, but yeah, hi, I'm Janet, and I'm with the San Diego Area Writing Project, and I work with youth grades 9 through 12 in an independent study program through Health Sciences High School. Oh, Jan Janet, I, I, before I forget to ask, it, it, that teacher who jumped on to Youth Voices at the end of the year here, do you know her? No, but she found oh. on Twitter. What? She was following us on Twitter. I think that's why she jumped on. Wow. Cool. Anyway, her kids, her kids did a um, plastics project, and that's what's on the front page of Youth Voices right now. And yeah, I need what her school is what two miles away from your school, so neat. yep. That she was, she yeah, I think I don't know her, but she's like, Yeah, we literally are super close. And she's like, I'm gonna do something. I'm like, Okay, and, but on Twitter is where she found us going back and forth and then realizing, Oh, well, I'm local, so yes, I want to connect with her and do more with that. So I think there's a lot of potential there, but you no, know, literally, I was like, What? Okay, small world, big world, right? Yeah, so. so I thought it was okay to interrupt that way because <laughs> that is that is sort of what we want to make happen um, as much as possible, those kinds of connections. So, um, Can I add one more thing? So please, yeah, go ahead. I feel like Paul and I started drafting these things just to clarify what we're what what this group is meant to do, but this is still a draft. So if there are things you think are important to include or you want to push on something um you know let's have that conversation to make sure i mean we have some goals of this project that are kind of um either goals that have come up through this community of people using lrng and youth voices or are part of the consulting contract that we have with lrng to do some work and give them some feedback on stuff so we're kind of informing this based on those pieces I actually I would say that one of the pieces we also comes into this mix, Paul, I believe, is some of the experience with um, the portfolios too, like past experience with National Geographic and some of the L work that you guys did in Youth Voices. So, so all those pieces are kind of determining this list. So just clarifying what this list is, I think is really kind of important for us to all do. And let me also say that I was fascinated, Don, and with Chris Sloan also, um, that you guys have portfolios that you kids do already. Um, I didn't know you did. Um, and so like bringing to bear that stuff into this work feels like an important piece to as well. Mm -hmm. You guys know from all that. Um, Uh, I'm, I'm just reading through this. Let's see. Uh, so, should we jump to? We're not going to do a, a, a sort of like um, description of the of the youth, but we do want to ask um, who, and ask each of you to talk about the the person, the people you think will be using this LRNG and Youth Voices next semester in the fall not that far away actually so you maybe describe that yeah <laughs> what happened i can start great, great. That... thanks yeah. <laughs> these google hangouts are so awkward sometimes to know like when when you ought to speak up or not it's true um, well, Janet's been raising her hand. We, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have the whole time. Okay, so I know that I'm going to have my journalism students work on the playlist. Um, there are, there's at least a photography playlist that exists already. Um, 
that I know that I want them to work with. Uh, because that, that's something that I don't get enough time in class to do like as a synchronous lesson for all of them um, time wise and then also supply wise like it just doesn't work to do it all at once. I've tried to do it all at once. Um, some of the things that are included in, in the playlist, but um, it works much better if it can be hands on and we've only got like three or four cameras. So we can't really do that. But if it's something where I can let them work at their own pace and just ask them to complete it by a certain time, then that works. But then there are also some of the, um, some of the other youth voices playlists. Um, I, I can't remember which ones they were off the top of my head right now. Um, I've been in Belize for the last week and I looked at these before I left. Um, the day after a couple days after we um had the last meeting yeah um but anyway i looked through a few that i think would really help them um with writing editorials um doing their opinion writing and just looking through and doing a little bit of research to back up what their opinions are um so i, I know i'm definitely going to have my journalism students work with that but then as I looked through the playlists, I also think I might have my AP seminar students use them. So my journalism students are, they're ninth graders through 12th graders and they have different levels of experience. Some of them are in journalism one and they're ninth graders and some of them are in journalism one and they're seniors. And then in I have- the Same class, same time? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Same class, same time. And then like I'll have my editors in chief, it'll be their fourth and fifth times taking the class um, but they'll be in there with the others and I like it that way they learn from each other that way but it's just sometimes it does get hard to to manage and to make sure you're not repeating the same things for the kids who've already had it three times so um, and and they range it's a wide range of ability levels and experience and grades and demographics and everything um, with that group then cool. my other group it's ap seminar um and i also teach those that same group of kids for ap lang um there are a couple of playlists that touch on or at least one i my, there might have been two that i was looking at for them there's one definitely though that is about um presentation skills and for this class they have to do two big presentations that are actually part of their ap exams um, and we have some more structured things that we do in the spring, but I want them to kind of do some things in their own time in the fall. And so that playlist, I think, is something that I would like for them to do, um, for all of them to do. And then some of the playlists that examine um, argument and social justice issues and civic awareness issues are things that I want them to have some choice with to, to play around because the other half of what they do is come up with um, a research question um, for a group research paper and presentation. And then they also have to do one individually later on. So we do some practice ones in the fall. Um, so I think having that as like a jumping off point for inquiry and, uh, and I think there, there is a playlist just on beginning inquiry um and that was another one that i'd looked at so th there are a few that I, I i wasn't thinking originally to use it with them but the more i looked through the youth voices playlist the more i was thinking that they would actually be a really good fit for those guys and enough variety to where i wouldn't have to say okay you need to do this one i could say Here, here's a group you know choose what you want to do so it's that more authentic process of choice and those are all juniors and they all take AP classes and um so and I don't know them, but. Oh, cool. and one of the concerns you mentioned last last time was that it not be an add-on in some way right so we'll have to keep that in mind well I feel like I appreciate what Ashley's description here just in the way it feels like these are these are openings where these things like certain natural places where it might fit i don't know i yeah. just to see how these go you know yeah that's what i was really looking for is like okay where where will this 
fit where it doesn't feel like something that, that is extra where it feels like it's fits a piece that I'm already planning on doing, but just happens a little differently. And so yeah. the more I looked into the, I mean, especially like the inquiry one that, um, and the, the different, um, like argument of, and civic engagement projects. That's a lot of what those kids want to look into anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so that just gives them a little bit more direction. And I always change things with that class. This is only, this will be the third year that I've taught that class. Um, it hasn't been around that long, but, um, I've changed something about it every time I've taught it. And that feels like a, a natural way for it to go. So Who else? And again, the question started with who will be <laughs> the youth using this pla these platforms this fall? I can go next. Okay. So I have in the fall, I have a creative writing class and creative writing. There's a lot of wonderful creative pieces, but I've been really trying to think around um, my American literature classes. And this is the class where I've integrated American Creed work and a lot of uh, C3WP work and also civic engagement work. And I, I, I'm trying to reframe my start of the year to make this more of a natural fit because I've, I've said numerous times I'm trying to make it work so it makes sense to the content and also to workflow. So I was thinking about reframing my questions. So like guiding questions for the year. And so far, and they're really, really drafty, but one is like, how do literacy skills, how are literacy skills important to define self? So doing some things around self, country, and what it means to be human, and then how is writing used to make change? So I'm thinking about just sort of reframing the quest or guiding questions to start off the year to get into all those things. Um, and then I can dovetail it into the, the um, literature that's a piece of it too. So I'd get into argument writing and writing for change and trying to do some of that stuff. So that's what I'm figuring if I start the year off with a strong plan, I can make some good sense of how it would naturally make more sense. I think in the past I've been trying to figure it out once I had like a plan. So I'm happy to be having these conversations in the summer and doing my thinking around that. Cool. Um, the creative writing kids that's who you were describing here right that's the class so that so american literature is what i was describing but i can definitely do it with creative writing also I, oh no i was just trying to get it clear okay sorry yeah so that so like my american lit students are the ones that did all the american creed and yeah defining american okay okay and a lot of that stuff and then creative writing i keep adjusting all the time but they were the ones that this spring I tried to get into it and I think it was just too late in the flow of things so what are what are there different grades for those different yeah American Lit is mostly juniors some advanced sophomores and creative writing is mostly seniors and some juniors great and in the past, I've done both of those classes have done use playlists for choice. My creative writing did more of the one that was the writing around place, but they didn't publish a lot of it. And American Lit is where I've done in the past Raise Your Voice playlist. But I was, I've been thinking about, you know, how I keep asking the same questions. I'm really, I am committed to trying to figure this out. And I think it's about guiding questions and sort of starting with this as my frame. And, and so it's not an add on later on. So we start off with it. Then I think I could get some 
good traction with it. That's what I'm hoping for. I think that might help some of the challenges I've had before. Um, Don, for creative writing, what was the playlist that most of them did? They oh, love place. They love the writing about place and the pictures. Yeah, places we love. Okay. Yeah. Places, places we love. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But they, they, you know, all the art ones and the photography ones, I can integrate that into to that class, no problem. Mm -hmm. cool. Janet, do you want to go? Are you there, Janet? Hello? No. Okay. I can Inciting. talk a little bit about Go for it, Jessica. Um, yeah, now I'm yeah. for some weird reason. Oh, oh go ahead. Oh, there she is. No, I'm fine. Go ahead, Jessica. Go. Oh, okay. Um, I uh, I feel like this is a very slow motion process for me because uh, of the more transient nature of our population. Um, we have a serious attendance problem. So uh, there was only literally two or three people each quarter that could have gotten anything out of what we did around playlists this past year. And um, it's very possible that it will stay that way. So I need to find a way to, you know, have a minimum number of things that they have to do in order to, you know, earn credit, get a grade, pass, because they might end up having me four times in the year. So I have to, um, like Ashley was saying, sometimes, you know, swap one playlist out for another one so that somebody doesn't have to do the same thing twice or, um, do something similar but not exactly the same way like yes this is another sort of introductory bio but let's give it a different lens um so like we had at the last cycle we have four cycles in the year it's basically two semesters cut up again into 10 week cycles so that they can earn their credits faster and um I, I, I thought for sure we were going to have at least three people pass so that there was one kid who was there almost every day who really wasn't nearly as engaged as we thought he was. And um, I have to think about how to keep somebody like that engaged because there, there were days when there were only three people in the room. You know, he was one of three people in the room, but still, um, you know, Jose, what are you working on? Oh. I'm commenting. Okay, still, you know, again, and um, he 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 got stuck. He got stuck there, and the ones who did well did so well, and just managing the disparate, the disparity in experience in such a small class. Um, I mean, just listening to what Ashley said about the difference in experience levels and. Um, you know, could have freshmen and seniors in the same room. And we have that too, except that I feel like they're 10 miles apart. So last year, this past year was like really good groundwork for how it could look when it doesn't work the way I want it to. <laughs> Not that it didn't work, but it didn't, didn't work very well for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, excuse me one second. Oh. <laughs> Janet, what? can you jump in? I can jump in. Yeah, because Jessica and I are on the same page in the sense of, you know, we both have an independent study program attendance issues. Um, I felt like we had success because we rounded, I actually did a class that was poetry for the last quarter. So when we talked, we had a nine-week quarter. So I used 
I create, I used the poetry playlist. I just pulled a bunch of, you know, the playlist for poetry and said, poetry of place of this, of that. And we played with that and a couple other things to the novel, blah, blah, blah. That worked well. And so this year we're changing how we're going to be teaching it. And so it will be a course a month in the sense of, it's hard to explain, but we'll be doing a focus of English and then a focus of history and then a focus, math will be throughout and then a focus of science and blah, blah, blah. So I'm looking to do this in two ways. So when I think about the focus, I'll have a, I have 22 on my roll. I'm looking at it from a portfolio perspective of let's really looking at learning of setting up a portfolio that works, um, of space. And then every unit that I create, because I'm creating all these pieces and parts, we will find playlists. Now, is this going to be the free open model that I would love? No. But the free open model that I tried was a huge flop just for my inexperience in there. We spent a long time in American Creek. I mean, we just spent time. I learned a ton. So what I want to do is do some structure. So I need to spend the next two to three weeks looking and seeing what, which of these current playlists do we have that would really enhance a program and make that a requirement, and then hopefully come up with at least enough options in there so they feel like they have some choice in what they do. My students liked it for the most part. They liked the poetry in particular, mostly I think because we went from Youth Voices Where I'm From and the podcasts and the publishing and that, that group experience in the fall led to a really better independent experience in the spring. What it had taught me as the facilitator, however, was some of it was too similar. So the kids were like, I've already done this, or I yeah. feel like I'm adding, you know, they didn't quite see that. Um, but for me, the focus, which I think the power of this is really the portfolio piece and how, what is that going to look like for students? Because my students very much like the learning of I'm done. I've got this check mark at the bottom. I finished this, this piece. Um, and it goes somewhere. <clears throat> Where we lacked, significantly didn't do anything with, was the really important piece of the portfolio, which is evaluating the work. So I see myself in using this as, okay, here's your assigned playlist. Here's your self-reflection throughout the year. That, I think, is a really important piece that um, will raise the rigor for what I want my students to be doing. Does that make sense? Definitely. Yeah. Um, one question I had was that, um, it do the, are you at a, well, this might be for you, Jessica, too. Are both of you in a school where the kids, are they doing, fulfilling competencies or they have to have credits or is it seat time or what sort of counts in your context? Credits. All of you, for what you time. just said, they have to have minimal seat time. And they're earning courses, so it's not just a credit. I mean, it's an actual high school credit. Um, but there is more independent component to that. So my students attend probably an average of three to four days a week. That's our expectation. Um, and so, yeah, it's different. And so that's why I think the potential for this is great. And then what Paul and I talk about constantly is that uh, my excitement for this is the youth voices, the interaction piece where their audience is greater than themselves. Right. Yeah. At my school, they earn credits. Um, seat time is minimal. Uh, it's hard to say. They're, I mean, they say that, you know, you could be absent. You're no longer allowed to fail someone because of attendance only so in the rare instance that we had somebody who could get all the work done and you know showed up for two classes out of 40 that counts. I suppose technically I could say you know they fulfilled the requirements but I could yeah it, it depends you know there seem to be shifting sands on on how much seat time yeah. matters unfortunately, but the credits are the important thing. The and they, they're credits. They're traditional credits. They're not like competencies that have to right. be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. English. 
English five, English eight, English, yeah, ESL, okay. whatever, yeah. The okay. principal at Paulson did tell me, by the way, that when she created the school, what, fifteen years ago, twelve yes. years ago, something, like that. yeah. Um, that it she, was competencies. Wa it, she wanted it to be a competency school, but mm -hmm. they, they didn't have the the structures to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> now she does if she looks at what we're doing. But <laughs> yeah. right. Jessica, how many students? I'm sorry, I just trying to get a handle on. Do you know like uh, how many are on your roster? Do you know? I could have I, I, at some point I had 15 on roster. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's a first period class. So oh, yeah, yeah. Very often, never more than three, four Got it. at yeah. the most. Yeah. Okay. And that's a, as our principal likes, a citywide problem. Yeah. Not just, and then more so in our population. Only New York City has a problem. Don't worry. <laughs> Only New York it's City. a nationwide <laughs> problem, but anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so, how are we doing here? Should, should we should we look at um, some of the next questions, Christina? Does that make sense? Well, the next so, questions. So, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, this what we want them to know and be able to do. I feel like we've sort of said that. Everybody's said that a little bit. I mean, not in its specificity, but. Mm -hmm. I can't hear Ashley anymore. I took oh, it off okay. you. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Um. Janet, did you say that your classes had a credit recovery aspect, or did I mishear that? No, not a credit recovery aspect. Okay. They're, um, they're, that's, well, that's mine. Yes and no, in, in the sense that some of my seniors are significantly behind. So, okay. yes, you can, you can go, we, okay, in, in our, in our city, there are credit recovery, like what we call them credit mills. I probably mm -hmm. shouldn't say that on tape, but <laughs> where the kids really don't do a lot for that particular credit, correct? So we are very um, precise in that you're making the seat hours and the curricular that it's an equivalent, not a less than. So okay. we don't use the term credit recovery because that kind of implies that you're doing something less than you normally would in a classroom. The work technically should be, even if you're not face-to-face -face with me, the work is commensurate to if you were going to a, to a regular course. Um, and then what some of my students do, I had a young lady last year, for example, who had, was missing four classes. And so she did a significant amount of work. She did four English classes, which would be two years worth of English in a year. And she completed all of our, you know, so every quarter she took on a new English course. And that's what we mean by kind of recovering. Gotcha. Where other students could take the whole semester to do that course. She really pushed herself to do more. Yeah, we, um, we have a similar setup with some of our, um, well, with our credit recovery program. My, my husband's an assistant principal at another school in our county. Uh -huh. he, was, he was listening to part of the conversation um, around the playlist a couple weeks ago, and he expressed some interest in having some of his teachers use it um, with their credit recovery program in the fall. Yeah. Some of our earlier work in this with the playlist was with credit recovery. Joe Dillon, um, they were doing credit recovery at that school. I'm trying to think who else, but oh, our, Joe, that's what our school is all about. Yeah, that's what your school is, right? Right. Let me call this. Um, I think students, and I was looking at KQED, and they're doing work this summer which i want to jump on and try and get into um on media i want to say media savvy but i mean media awareness how to decipher media how to um not only be responsible in posting but in really researching and knowing how to do that so when i think about what do i want my students to know and be able to do i really want them to be able to evaluate um sources media and sources. I think that that's really critical. My kids, I don't know about anybody else or if it's only my students, but we only still students. Okay, good. <laughs> only me. We, only, my, my students call it, I always make fun. I said, you know, my mom used to say, ask the Google. I said, you know, Google is not a source. You guys are killing me. Um, I was I able to. Too, have, it's terrible. <laughs> 
I was able to at least get into Unsplash and some things like that that immediately cite, you know, images mm -hmm. and make sure they're appropriate and all that. But beyond that, really engaging them in how to um, determine fake news, that whole bit. And I know KQED is, um, they're through the, and also in, with their writing project up north, is doing a lot of work with that that I want to look at this summer as well. So I'm not sure. I haven't even looked at what's on learning, if there's anything on that. But um, that's critical for my kids, and I've got to put that into our first couple weeks together. We're considering doing like a boot camp kind of model where the first two weeks kids will be learning how to, you know, crazy things like log on, write an email, um, those kind of things that need to happen for kids that, especially in our situation, um, are more independent. And so how are you checking in and what are you doing and how do you ask questions? But a lot of our kids have no idea, not just basically citing sources, but mediating sources. You know, what is a good source? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Am I alone on that? Crickets? <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of the things I get excited about that Chris Sloan did this year is, um, is have his youth take their sources and put them in now comment. Mm -hmm. and, and comment on them and then share them with each other and Ooh. and then you know so they invite three of their peers to comment on that source as well so they're they're always kind of looking at the um at the source that way so it just they don't just quote something and it disappears so he's able to then say okay you you said that in the third paragraph, but did you read down to the seventh paragraph where they say this, right? So right. that, so then when they post on Youth Voices, they post links to their now comment um, sources. Ooh, so, I like that. So that kind of, um, yeah, that, I think that's an interesting thing that he's pioneered around all that. I think that. Um, Let's keep going. That's really yeah. helpful. No, I like that. Like, I feel like this is really helpful because it might also point to places either where we want to always keep in mind when we're developing any new con or remixing re content or that we should develop a playlist that supports that kind of work, you know, um, out of what Chris has been doing. But anyway, let's keep going out like that. Mm -hmm. I well, and I think especially coming up, right, it's going to be 2020, so the media is going to be, I mean, the potential yeah. for that. For, I'm thinking of my history unit in the spring of next year. It's definitely going to be civic engagement. It's definitely going to focus on that. And fake news, that media is an easy way to source it. But just my kids really struggle. And I think using, um, I don't know how many people use iCivics. Um, it's also a great free um, program that I use with kids that has a lot of um, really simple but well done I feel units on civic engagement but I think that's just I know there's a lot on on, um, on learning and I haven't had a chance to look at that but I think that would be a piece that I, a unit I would definitely want to tackle in the spring and then having that boot camp model at the beginning of how to you know really research a source I think is important There we go. Look at the, look at what I all the random comes out of my mouth, and then Christina makes it media, media literacy. Wow, <laughs> oh, that sounds so much better. I'm very interested in that also for for both of the groups that I mentioned. Yep. Check the doc. Yeah, I guess that's probably a good shared. So, um. I'm going to add on here just the developing portfolios because I, I, I heard Janet say. Oh, that's huge for me. I just didn't hear anything else. And that else may or may not. I know we called this a digital portfolio project. So there's like this thing about portfolios. But I'm curious how many people think that portfolios would be sort of built into what you're doing, doing with this project or it would sort of be tangential. I, I have to say I found last year playing with it. And Paul knows I played with all sorts of different ways of trying to do that because trying to document independent student work is really challenging. Um, I 
really feel like learning how, I love the way you can dump it into a portfolio, which is what my students literally did, which is yeah. what I learned is I got exactly what I asked for, which was put it in your portfolio, never explicitly teaching them to do the evaluation piece of that. So they used it as a great storage spot, which okay. was wonderful because they didn't lose things, but there wasn't that reflective piece. So I guess for me, adding, adding portfolios beyond storage, but really as a point of reflection. Um, uh, my now son-in-law does a lot of work where students each week in a Google Doc do a, a, reflection, a weekly learning reflection. Mm -hmm. And he looks at that each week with his kids, and he has a variety of English and history classes. Um, which I thought was pretty powerful. And I thought, well, that probably would fit into somehow the portfolio and learning as well, you know, putting in some kind of ongoing reflection. And, and I think we really, the, the kids liked getting the reflection in these voices, you know, posting their pieces and uh, having students reflect other people besides themselves. So, and where do badges fit as well? Where do badges fit? <laughs> so, I use a grade, like you're done. Like that was your minimal base, right? You earned that badge. So that's your, your not your grade necessarily, but you, you know you've completed it when you've earned that badge. My students could care less, 100%. But I think it's also, we were playing around and they didn't really understand it yet. But the badge component of itself, like how many badges can I earn, was like, we don't care. In my right. particular group. So what, what I'm wondering is, is there a way that we could have the youth, have the youth use the portfolios in some way? I'm, I'm not, I don't know what this is really going to look like. But it does seem like there could be some, uh, some peer assessment of the badges together. Uh-huh. Um, so that, yeah, I've earned the badge, but now I want to talk about this work. Yeah, uh, that I think would be good. One thing but, yeah. I just wanted to bring up about badges in case, uh, you know, like I often get geekily excited about badges because I'm like, oh, they're connected to metadata, they're connected to student work, blah, blah, blah. You know, like I find that personally exciting. I didn't realize that kids, you know, lots of people may not at all. But then really the way LRNG talks about their badges is that it's connected to an opportunity that you're unlocking with your badge, mm -hmm. right? Like that's actually the language of LRNG. And, and so it just makes me stop and think, oh, wait, wait, my sort of frame is, you know, and so I also wonder about like, what are the opportunities that we design into these badges or into the portfolio that is either an opportunity within the community of practice or is an opportunity within your context, I'm not sure. But. Well, like for me within my context and using it with my journalism students, it'd be like once you complete a certain amount of badges then you get to be a staff writer and like yeah. actually like write for the paper instead of just being enrolled in the class yeah yeah so stuff like that like how's it sort of help you build the positionality in the community i mean i do wonder around peer assessment too about this like you could become a peer assessor you know like we Well, like the way that that class runs, because we have so many different levels in the same class, like they're used to peer assessment Yeah. Um, in other contexts. Like when our writers, you know, write anything, they have at least four of their peers to look it over mm -hmm. and give feedback. Yeah. So that would be a natural thing for them to do. That's not, I'm going to try to see how badges could be any kind of incentive piece. 
in my class just because we have a, we have a time problem you know yeah uh everything has to happen so fast it's like once you get one you have to start working on the next one if you're really working on them and uh what could it lead to if you maybe only need my class one time you know or i could um There's a, I don't know if, if the CDOS program, Paul, that, that Matthew was using. I don't know if that's used in other cities. It's like career, oh. career development um, and occupational skills. Basically, mm -hmm. it's a big computer program that if you do enough of and get enough get a high enough score on you can opt out of one of the state exams for mm -hmm. social studies you can opt out of the global history or the that would US be an history. interesting incentive yeah that's interesting. and then uh is there a way i could tie it to that hmm. yeah yeah hold on to that idea if that's interesting yeah um could we ask Jessica? Could you? Could you? I, I call it the back of the napkin plan. <laughs> oh but, yeah. yeah. That's great. Could you? Maybe we could look at that briefly, okay. and then. I will. I promise. I'm looking at it. My face is just going to go away. And come on, an iPad. Paul, while she's doing that, what opting yeah. out of? What was the thing? It, CDOS. It's opting. C D O S. Okay. So I think they don't have to take the global. Is that right? The global, um, you, can the opt state out of, exam. you can opt out of either social studies exam. You ha you're required to take global studies and US unless you do CDOS. Almost everyone decides to opt out of global because it is oh, okay. much harder to pass. Yeah. Yeah, rather than, yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're jumping down paul so yeah if that's okay because i do think we want to we want to point to that that list of links as well underneath that yeah so there's a list here of existing curriculum that paul put in and it links to and we've got right now we've got the system set up like these things across different orgs so you might all have to be added to these orgs to see all of them all of that's public i get all that's public. No, Swell isn't. It is. That, it, there's only one playlist there, but it is. Yeah. Oh, but there's that, your Ellen's group in Mississippi. Okay. So there is more that could be there. Yes. There's a few more that are drafted yeah. that you can't see here, but these are the public ones. So there. So in case you haven't looked at all of these, we just want to make sure you have links to them. Okay. Oh, this is cool. But Jessica, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> So Jessica, um, what a, yeah, just like briefly, you have four cycles and you started- Four cycles, to, yeah. 10 weeks each. And I thought, okay, what can you get done in 10 weeks? What should you get done in 10 weeks? And um, cycles one and three are where we have the most incoming, you know, cause um, we're still accepting students up until October 31st in, in the first half of the year and um jessica i yeah. want to interrupt I, I i'd love for you to describe how you went into lrng and found intro to lrng you found oh. know, know thyself like how did you find these different playlists oh, i just sat down and went through what was already there because you and i had been making this playlist which i still want to do but then right. i said okay i am you know have been reinvent part of my problem over the last 21 years has been how do I keep reinventing the wheel to, you know, fresh material and don't burn out and whatever. Let me see what's already here that is usable that I can use for my purposes. So I just, I just went through everything and saw what I could use and what I couldn't use. And some of them were ones we had used and others, um, others we hadn't used or we didn't need to because we had you we didn't need intro to our lrng you know mm -hmm. so um i thought i would do that in cycles one 
one and three because that's the likelihood that um, I would have the most newer students to Pulse and new, or newer students to this. So they would have to do a badge on intro to LRNG and apply digital skills and then two others. Jessica, you and I are going to be fast friends. We're doing exactly the same. I mean, who's that, Janet? Yeah, I, I mean, okay. we have four cycles as well. It's going to be even more complicated <laughs> this year, but I'm looking at your napkin going, oh, I love you, you so much. Where are you located? San Diego. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be a cross the country girlfriend trying to figure this out. Uh, on the way up from Mexico City, you can visit. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. Right on the way. Keep on over. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'll work. And it, I'm sorry if I'm sort of rushing through this, but I did want to kind of show the the tree just to see if that. Can I share a screen, Christine, or how does that work? Or you could. What are we show a tree? Yeah. Am I going too fast? Too? It, no. It, okay. How do I share screen? Share. Got it. There we go. Does that work? Something's changing, then it didn't. No, nope, it doesn't. Uh, am I sharing it now? Yeah, I am, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So this is, um, let's just. Whether or not it, it turns out exactly like this, let's say it is. I can, I? You can play with that. So this is this is um, Jessica's first cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So it says begin by completing these two playlists. There's an intro one, and then how to deal with Google one. Oh, look, what you did. Cool. <laughs> and then there's and then there's uh, next complete. One, one of these, of these three. three. So there's this one, but then this one is more for kids who have immigration stories. And then there's the six word memoir for kids who don't want to do the writing, whatever. <laughs> so, but they've got to do one of these three, right? Mm -hmm. And then here's our inquiry with questions. And then after you do that one, do one more of these four. So there's, there's a sort of- um, There's the choice. Growing list of choices that people are making. Right. Yeah. Paul, don't get rid of this. I, no. I think actually like let's these two things are really valuable, both Jessica's notes and this. So let's keep a hold of these. Mm -hmm. Well they're and they're linked in that document. So yeah. Oh good, yeah. yeah. Um so I guess I wanted to show that to to suggest that you could start thinking about, I, I call these trees, you could call them maps, whatever you want to call them. But you could start thinking about what maps well, you know, what, what fits together. Partially to, to, to spend some time finding things that you think would work with your students. But here's the other part. I think, I think I'm gonna say Chris Sloan will look at these, the, the middle row and say, you know what? I do that bio thing so much better. <laughs> the way I do it, right? And then he could create another playlist, but we would all sort of know that it fits on this row and why it fits on that row. There's some sort of intuitive sense of that. And then these are obviously all, the bottom row here is inquiry into civic issues kind of thing. So if there is, so, so both, it both shows what's there you know that we we get clear with that with each other and then and we help each other say oh there's another one like that you could use and then, then it also identifies what needs to be made or what you would like to make for your particular kids yeah paul i would like to suggest that people like i could see if maybe we were like mocking up something like this even just on paper it's like if uh -huh. there's if there's one you think you'd like to use as it is if there's one that you you need but you don't see you know you can like make that a different kind of symbol or whatever like just mark that as like i need something like this but i don't quite see it and then i think there's a third 
thing, which is like, this one is close, but not quite. And I'd want to. Yeah, like the change. issue with the, um, the one with the, we, sent, we flagged it to your attention. The one that has sort of a, a political position in the middle of a survey or something. Yeah, the know thyself. But yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I think Christine is saying something even bigger than that, though. It's like. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Well, I was there. There are definitely, I think there's two things. I think what I, I think there's both editing playlists that aren't quite doing it the right, like that need tweaking. And we probably like always need to adjust, you know, we learn things when we use it with kids and we're like, well, that doesn't quite work. And then I was also thinking like, you might want to, so like you have the literature one around Beale Street, but someone might say, oh, I'm not doing Beale Street. I'm doing, I don't know. And I don't see anything around, I don't know, what's a piece of literature in your class, Don? I'm not a literature teacher. I just can't think of any of them right now. Still so the great Gatsby. Okay, right. So, so then we can like figure out sort of a plan for remix because you can remix this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if everybody's seen how the remix works. I feel like that might be a helpful thing for us to look at together too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Paul, is that sort of what that you're- That sounds right, yep, yep. I mean, does this notion of trees help? I mean, does it help us both give us enough freedom to do what we need to do in our classes and help us re, re represent to each other what we're doing? That's what I think is important, right? As the trunk of the tree is voices and LRNG or roots, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about the metaphor too much. Great. So I got to where we need to get to, I felt like we need to get to, how are you all feeling? <laughs> where are we? I'm delighted with the tree. <laughs> you know, I feel good about it. I was thinking about it with the badge conversation and I added my note. I just added my notes was that um, I was listening to Janet talk about the reflection. And one thing that I've done with portfolios in the past is to have students, they have to actually write a final argument that proves that they learned what they learned and explain specifically. <laughs> nice. So, so they, it's an argument about their learning and really metacognitive and then they cite themselves, their selves. Cool. They cite all the work that they've done. So I think maybe like thinking around the skill base of the tree kind of fits with that for me. And then also like, um, the, that's another way to think about a badge for me to say like, I did these certain badges, these are the specific skills, and then I can talk about that learning and demonstrate it. So it's coming together in my head now, finally. Yay. We are past nine, so I just want to, yeah. any? Well, it's not nine oh, where Janet is yet. So. Nine, well, yeah, I'm the easy one, right? <laughs> it's good. It was, I was stuck in traffic. Sorry, I popped in late. Um, what are we committing to bring in the two weeks? Where are we, what direction are we going? I guess that's my next question. Paul, you're thinking like everybody bring a tree, right? Or well, and I have a specific way to think about that. I mean, I, I, I love, I loved hearing the big plans. On the other hand, I would, I kind of want to see where people want to start, right? So, hmm, that's interesting. I mean, I mean, I, I, I this tree, for example, the first two up there at the top could be done in two days and then I anyway, mean so so to think about what the first month would look like would be interesting I think and that's what we're if you want to be if you want to go bigger of course go bigger but that's what I would like us to share with each other because one of the things that was said in the last session was that we need to talk you know see each other's work 
and the youth need to see each other's work faster. We can't wait till the end of the semester, right? Right. <coughs> and then it's going to be interesting with how Jessica and I pop in and out with this. You know, our numbers are small, clearly. But, um, it's fine. yeah, they need to jump. They'll be coming in in various ways. So I'm, I'm all for coming up with that first month and what that looks like. Um, and then in my case, it's actually a nine week. Yeah, first piece, cycle. Right. Makes so that's, sense. you know, each quarter is a different. Yeah. First so cycle it's a, makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. 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 Each cycle is nine weeks. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll, we'll get it. So, and I would love some input, my friend in New York, on how you're doing this as well. I think this is a super exciting to have someone else with a similar population more or less the same thing, yeah. figuring out how this looks. Because I mm -hmm. felt like there was such potential last year. I guess that's why I'm so excited about this, where a lot of missed opportunity on my part, but also a lot of growth on when my kids did X at night conversations with them. Um, they really, this was something that they felt was valuable. And for students who are typically disengaged, that was, I'll take a, I kind of liked it. That was like having a parade. Oh, so, I'll take it. Awesome. I have one question um, to help my thinking, and that is the portfolio in LRNG that the URL it is indeed public, right? So students can publicly share their portfolios. Can be they have private. an option. Okay, so they can make it public, and they and I remember that we talked. You can embed it in other things too, right? Yes. Although those embedded pages are kind of wonky, I gotta say. Okay. So. It's yeah. not a perfect it would solution. be useful to know if embedding in what context, like for a development, like letting the developers know about that. I mean, right now you can move badges around, like export them, but they're open badges, so you can export them and put them into different open badge systems. But the portfolio, I don't think, has that same flexibility. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, the badges aren't. Yeah. I <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, none of that works terribly. What, what, but what we really need is... Um, but it's possible, technically. Yes, it is. I, so what we really need, though, is to see all the Okemos badges in one place, right? So that if we wanted to go in and comment on those, we could do that. Sure. Is that is that what we're looking for kind of thing? Badges and or portfolios. I don't know. <coughs> My, I have students that... Um, remix their portfolios after my class it's another way they look at it like they are developing their digital footprint and then they want to share it in a different way so they link <coughs> up and create these other things so i'm just trying to think about that's cool whether or not that's possible for them or yep. if it makes sense or how do they remix it they take it and it becomes like one branch of their portfolio. They just keep adding on to it and then they use it for, then they use it for a lot of different purposes like um, writing samples to share places or other classes or job type things. Yeah, I mean, I was on this, I was telling pause on this research project and portfolios and that's what they were seeing with kids is that like, especially when they get in the older grades, they start to morph them a lot you know, for like specific audiences, like if they're mm -hmm. applying for a job or college or whatever. So that's something for us to think about. I mean, I think these portfolios are fully in the kids' control. They could do that technically, however they want. I mean. That's a piece that I wondered, because that's like, that is a piece they love, love, love about it when it comes together, because they see it as a good stepping stone, right, for for other learning experiences. Yeah. Well, and a showcase, right? An easy showcase or a link for someone just, I could see that in the application era, you know? Yep. What you would suggest that we kind of early on have them experience different kinds of portfolios. So a portfolio could be really short, right? Just representing one badge. 
or it could be more complex representing an idea that went through five batches or something so that they get the sense that, that they can make as many portfolios in LRNG as they want to, right? Um, for different audiences with different content. So is there an LRN, is there a badge for portfolio creating in, in essence of like, what is a portfolio? Is there a badge for that? There's one that Kieran and Paul made. It's pretty specific to their class, but it's, you know, I might look at that as a model and yeah. I'm really because That's I want your skills here. I don't want it to be, and I don't know how this is going to work because it's frustrating last year. Um, some kind of continuity in that portfolio where it's, and so I need to have some common thread. That's what I'm thinking through, and we'll be reaching out to you guys more in two weeks once I have a kind of a bigger plan of where we're going as a school. Um, but I want continuity in the portfolio. So I understand what, you know, so it's not just, oh, here's my badge portfolio, but here's, here's my growth throughout the year. That's where my students really need to see themselves to be able to celebrate growth as opposed to I finished this thing mm -hmm. and I'm checking off this thing and now I'm going on to the next thing. So they can see writing as something that is integrated throughout all the things they need to complete and boxes they need to click off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see where I'm going with that? Mm -hmm. It's a big higher, higher goal for this particular group. Um, but when we did the, um, the whole, where I'm, not the where I'm from, but the, this, I believe, piece, there was some pretty heavy transformation of about 10 of my students in seeing themselves as writers and then we kind of lost that because then we went to something new and then that thing didn't carry over so it's just something i'm contemplating and will be seeking your advice this summer as i plan this year of kids who come in and out yeah but yeah. for those that i have i'd love them to be able to at the end say oh look at my growth look at my growth as in my thinking yep because yeah. ultimately that's what we want kids to be right i mean Mm -hmm. So it is a longer conversation, but one of one of the ways to think about it is these badges that we define that we're using so far are sort of playlist badges. You finish right. the playlist, but we're starting to think about meta badges. That um, you know, I did I did a um, I connected with other youth in these four different playlists that I did. So that my, my ability to connect with other youth, I get a badge for that, right? So those meta badges might be what you're aiming toward. That's saying. exactly what I'm thinking so. of. And Paul, those are designable yeah. in the system now, right? Yeah, and one of the, yes. <laughs> yes and sort of. <laughs> yes and sort of. One of the things that's, that's interesting is that once you've completed an XP, if that XP shows up in another playlist, like a meta playlist, um, it will show up as already completed. So I don't, I'm getting too in the weeds there with that. But um, yeah, I think we're but thinking about that, those kinds of something. things. Yeah, I mean, it could be different. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I, mean, I don't like Myself, I just want to say I appreciate everybody's thoughts on this. I think this is feels like you put a lot of thought into this, so I just want to say I appreciate that. Um, of course. So, shall we release each other? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so we're saying bring our for our first month idea in two weeks like what's our first month gonna look like is that kind of what we're saying like where what are we where do we envision diving into this yeah and i think specifically using that list of playlists that are available that you know okay. you know don't For just stay on the youth voices one and and using jessica's notion uh, she went in and just searched for something and found different ones you you know if you right. find other great ones that's fine with with and then with find the, a napkin to write on right I, I'm no joke loving the napkin. That napkin is, I'm dropping that in. <laughs> With the looking, 
So, and and then the goal of that is to have three things. One, to identify what's there. Two, to, to say like, um, for, for us to say, oh, did you know about this one too, right? But then right. the third one is what do we need to develop? You know, what's not there yet? So I think those, that's the sort of goal of sharing this with each other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, so we're on the 17th. Okay, two weeks on a Wednesday. Perfect. All right. Cool. And everybody have a happy fourth. You too. Thanks to Don for suggesting we do this on the second instead of the yeah. third. <laughs> thanks, thanks for making it this day. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks, everybody. Sorry. That's a little <laughs> Donald joke there. Um, I said thanks. Never mind. Yeah. I, <laughs> I have ignored all that news. I just. Um, Paul, can I ask you something? I think yeah. you need to. If we're going to do this on TTT forward, I think you need to invite everybody to the next meeting, which is July 17th. I'll do that. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. okay. And you know, yeah. Okay. Thanks all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Janet, did weeks. you want to say one more thing? No, I was thinking, um, Paul okay. Hankins, I need to figure out what we're kind of, we're, we're going to do I, a very, um, small. We can I hang on if you want to talk, Janet. Sorry. Yeah, hang on. Everybody say goodbye. <laughs> I don't want to keep anybody else. Janet, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna email him and see if we can talk sometime. Yeah, but, I, and I'll I'll CC you on all that. Okay. Yeah, cause I'm working on. We're gonna do one or two things. I guess instead of a big huge this project, because his this project is this huge is to do this segment it's like two or three act two or three components of it cross country so i'm thinking that might be an interesting thing for us to figure out if learning might be something that may be a badge of that sort so we'll figure it out all right thank cool. you guys thank see you in two weeks okay bye bye everybody thanks paul yep thank, thank you hey mm -hmm. I saw your email about meeting and I didn't bring it up. I was I'm <laughs> I've been meeting all day. I've just been like, it's one thing after the other. It's amazing. Um, yeah, so, but Paul didn't remember. I did talk to Paul earlier today, so that's probably okay. why. Um, basically, when I talked to Barbara, what I was trying to do was like, just do an MOU with you guys so that it was fairly like flexible. But she wants to, because it's, um, what we're doing is we're putting, not that, well, let me stop recording. Mm -hmm.